Today we will learn about the sacrament of confirmation. After Jesus was crucified, the apostles lost courage. They were inside the house with the doors locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Confirmation brings an increase and deepening of baptismal grace. It roots us more deeply in the divine filiation which makes us cry, Abba, Father. He is not an angry dad, a judge, or a policeman writing in his book, All Our Sins. He is really a loving father. Confirmation unites us more firmly to Christ. Through this, he resides in us. It increases the gifts of the Holy Spirit in us. It renders our bone with the church more perfect. It gives us a special strength of the Holy Spirit to spread and defend the faith by word and action as true witnesses of Christ. It also helps us to confess the name of the Christ boldly and never to be ashamed of the cross. It also helps us to live as a good children in the continuous protection and strength of the Holy Spirit. We receive this sacrament of confirmation as a teenager several years after making our first holy communion. The essential rite of confirmation is anointing of the forehead with sacred prism and the words be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit by the bishop. Just as we receive the sacrament of baptism to receive the sacrament of confirmation, our godparents accompany us. Let's see which are the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Fear of the Lord Living in loving presence of God by avoiding sin. Knowledge Understanding the day-to-day -day situation and working for the glory of God. Counsel, choosing what is good and avoiding evil. Fortitude, firmness in making decisions for Christian living and courage to profess our faith. Piety, doing one's personal prayers and acts of charity and dedicating oneself to God. Wisdom. It is to look for and to love what is good and true. Understanding. Helps us to experience the presence of God in all events of our life. Now let's see which are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of self-control When we have control over our minds and senses and lead a morally good life, we bear the fruit of self-control. Fruit of love Accepting others as they are and living for others without selfishness. Fruit of kindness, when we share in the suffering of others and help them cheerfully, 
we yield the fruit of kindness. Fruit of Faith We put God as the absolute authority. Fruit of Purity Purity is a capacity centered on the dignity of the body. Fruit of Gentleness When we care for others and deal with them gently, we bear the fruit of gentleness. The Fruit of Goodness When we grow in kindness and help others also to grow in it, we yield the fruit of goodness. The Fruit of Patience when we practice perseverance, forgiveness and forbearance, we bear the fruit of patience. The Fruit of Faithfulness When we strongly believe in God and live according to His will, we bear the fruit of faithfulness. Fruit of Joy Living in right relationship with God The Fruit of Peace When we lead a life of justice, we bear the fruit of peace. The Fruit of Mildness It is a perfection of love which tempers justice by avoiding any unnecessary action that might provoke anger. Let's see which are the six sins against the Holy Spirit. 1. Despairing of Salvation This is when a person loses hope of salvation, judging that his eternal life is already lost and not believing in God's justice and power. 2. Presumption of Salvation when a person believes his salvation has been guaranteed by what he or she has done, this implies a feeling of pride. Third, denying our truth. When a person doesn't accept the truths of the faith, they consider his or her personal understanding to be greater than that of the church. 4. Envying the grace that God gives to other people If someone else obtains something good, even if you yourself already possess it or obtain it some other day. 5. Obstinacy and Sin It is the will to continue in error even after receiving the light and the help of the Holy Spirit, and thus he or she separates himself from God's will and rejects salvation. 6. Final Impenitence This is when he or she does not feel shame or not guilty of doing sin until the very end. They doesn't open himself to the Holy Spirit's invitation. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Through the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit, we understand clearly what we should do in our family, in our parish, and in our community. Through these gifts, we receive the courage and determination to carry out those duties. That's all about the Sacrament of Confirmation. Thank you for watching. May God bless you all.